If you're anything like me, you love steak, you love crab, and you love hollandaise. So naturally, you're gonna love Steak Oscar because it's those three things combined into one, and it is awesome. Now let's go! Let's start with the slightly tedious task of picking our crab. This is a Dungeness crab. If you've never had a Dungeness crab, it's one of my favorites. By far, the flavor and tenderness is just fantastic. So the first thing we need to do with this is just remove this whole top piece. If you can see right here, there's almost a little section that your thumb can get in really easily, and we'll just pick that off. Now all this goo and stuff you see in here is known as kind of the crab butter. Head cheese of the crab. Woo! It is strong, pungent, it almost smells like sea urchin to me. And that you can make some great sauces, stocks if you want to make a soup, if you want to use that basically as a flavor packet. I've also heard a lot of toxins from the oceans can get stored in this little headpiece inside of that crab butter. I don't have any studies on that, but that's what I've heard. Now down here, we get this little area out as well right here. Pick that off and we can break away these little mouthpieces right there as well. If you can see here, these are the gills of the crab. We're gonna remove those as well. And those are on both sides. And then basically you can just break this whole crab in half. And these parts are a little bit dirty right here. I think the easiest way to clean this off is just to rinse them out a little bit. Just like that, easy as can be. I just rinsed it out with some cold running water. And now we just break these legs off. Simple as that, easy as can be. Inside these little knuckle pieces or whatever they're called. So we'll usually just break those into a couple pieces like so, so they can be picked easily. Now, to get the meat out of the claws, you wanna break these first into their individual pieces like this. It's pretty easy to do. So when you want to get some of your meat out, I like to just take a little kitchen towel like this. This just reduces splatter. And just a light tap with a rolling pin. Clip it and just tap the other side just a little bit. And then you should be able just to pick it the rest of the way with your hands like so. And just remove that meat. Perfect. And we'll just put our meat into a bowl. And you just repeat that process with all the different pieces of crab. It doesn't matter what really section it's from. And up here with these little knuckle pieces, kind of want to just go through. You can pull out quite a lot with your hands like this. If you want to, you can get a chopstick like this, or if you have a specific tool like a little crab picker, that would obviously work great. And just kind of pick that meat out, actually works pretty darn well. Definitely don't discard these pieces, they're full of meat, they just require a little bit of TLC. And that's it, my friends, just repeat with the rest. You want to put the crab into a bowl with ice like this, and that's just going to keep it cold while you're working with the crab. You can also freeze your cutting board for about 15 minutes, and that will also help to keep everything cold. But because I only had one crab, I don't really need to do this, but that is an option for you if you're serving guests. Now another thing you must do, you may not like this one, but this is for you, this is for your guests, this is so nobody breaks a tooth and has a bad experience because there's nothing that ruins a meal like getting a piece of shell in your mouth. I mean there are worse things obviously, but that's pretty bad. Has that ever happened to you because it's happened to me? Just take a little pile of crab and you just pick through it with your fingers and we're just feeling for any shells. Like here's something, I'm telling you, you always miss stuff, always, right? And then put that into another bowl and just work your way through all the crab meat. This isn't gonna take that long, just a couple minutes, but it is key because definitely you forgot a shell. Trust me, you did. I'll now just store my crab in the fridge until we're ready to warm this up and finish the dish. Okay, we're gonna make hollandaise sauce. It's egg yolks and butter and a little bit of acid, meaning lemon juice, vinegar. I like a combination of both. This is the sauce that goes on top of the steak Oscar. It's also what you have on Eggs Benedict. It's also sort of the base for Bernays sauce. It's something you need to learn how to make. Lemon juice, white vinegar or white wine vinegar. I prefer white vinegar. And just a tiny little touch of water. The recipe will always be in the description. And so we're gonna start beating these egg yolks for a little bit until they get nice and pale We're gonna get a little air into them right now before we add the butter And I'm trying something completely new with this hollandaise sauce because I have a problem with the way It's usually made putting the egg yolks first over a double boiler But I'll explain more in a minute for now. We just beat these yolks. Okay, this looks pretty good to me You can see how it's really thickened up and it's quite a lot more pale at this point See that little ribbon forming now we can go ahead and melt the butter All right, we'll just get a pot down light it up medium heat and we're gonna drop in our butter. This is just unsalted butter. We'll season up that hollandaise a little bit later. And all we're gonna do is melt this for now. To skim off some of the cream that is left over from the butter making process. From milk you get cream, from cream you get butter. From butter you get love, is what it is really. Now I'm gonna take my trusty little tool here. Anything like this will do. Doesn't have to be this cool. That is pretty cool though. Etsy! And you can see all that cream floating the top, right? So what we wanna do is just get in here and just skim that off. You know, I don't mind getting a little bit of this into the hollandaise. A lot of people say this is gonna like destroy your hollandaise or break the sauce. Never once had that happen. In fact, I like that it loosens it up a little bit so it's not too thick, not too thin, right? Goldilocks, man, right in the middle. Another little trick you can do is just swirl in the middle a little bit like that. Should help push that to the edge and then we just skim up like so. That definitely looks good enough to me. What I'm trying to do here is make hollandaise without ever having to use a double boil in the first place. Probably the easiest way to do it is with an immersion blender, one of those hand blenders, but I know not everybody has one of those, so we're trying this. This is uncharted water. Because when you put the egg yolks in a bowl and 
cook them over a bain marie, meaning a pot with boiling water, a bowl goes on the top, and you set that bowl over the boiling water and you whisk those eggs. I see those egg yolks get way too cooked. It gets kind of grainy and lumpy, and then people start adding the butter, and then you end up with a hollandaise that looks like Gordon Ramsay here on YouTube, and you don't want that. Sorry, Gordon. That was the worst hollandaise I've ever seen, man. I just put my butter into a little pouring glass here so it's easy to stream, and make sure that butter is really hot still, and we'll just start streaming that in little by little, like so. And because this butter is so hot, it should be cooking the egg yolks, right? Without ever having to do that whole double boil thing. Ugh. And there we go, butter is in. Woo! Guys, that's hollandaise. It worked! So if you do want it thicker than this, although I'm happy with this, this is definitely thick enough. What you could do is now set it over a lightly simmering double boil. So I'm telling you, when you do the double boil first with the egg yolks, those egg yolks push up on the side of the bowl and they overcook and then get mixed back in, making for like a lumpy hollandaise. But this, man, this is absolutely beautiful. The only thing we need to do now, just season it up. I'm just using a little bit of Malden salt. You guys know me, you know I love Malden. Just about a half a teaspoon or so, but the recipe will always be in the description. Now, woo, man, that's good hollandaise. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna cover it like this. I don't like putting the plastic directly onto the hollandaise. It does help it not to form a skin, but then when you pull the plastic off, you just waste a ton of hollandaise. So I'm just gonna leave this somewhere slightly warm by the stove and we'll cook the steak and then finish the dish. Okay, filet mignon, right? When you're choosing one of these, always go thick with filet mignon. This steak can overcook so easily and so quickly. It really is kind of a pain to work with, at least when I did my experience in restaurants. I did over a dozen restaurants over 15 years all around the world my friends, and then private cooking and catering, so that's what I'm bringing to you on this channel. Like and subscribe, that's all I'm gonna say about it. I know some people may claim not to temper the meat through some science test or whatever, but you could talk to a thousand chefs and 999 of them are gonna tell you to temper your meat. Just putting a big hunk of cold meat into a hot pan isn't a good idea in our eyes. But do what you want, I just tempered this for about 30 minutes. If it's a much bigger steak, you might wanna do more. I'm just coating it with a tiny bit of oil, really a very minimal amount. And for me, this just acts kinda like a binder in the barbecue world, helping that seasoning really stay. Stick. Now, we're gonna use a little bit of rosemary salt. Awesome homemade seasoning I make on this channel. There's a link in the corner right now if you wanna learn how to make that. It's rosemary, sage, garlic, a little bit of lemon zest, kosher salt, really easy to make. So we'll start from up high here and we'll just season this thing all the way around. Edges too, other side. You know, always season up from a distance like this so you get a really even seasoning, simple as that. The original Sergeant Gilbert reporting for duty. He's a sentient pepper grinder, became aware a couple years ago. I'm just going finely ground pepper on this. I don't want the pepper to be too coarse. You get a big piece of pepper, what happens is you lift the steak off the pan. You basically lose contact with the pan, and so you lose your sear, you lose your sear, you lose your color, you lose your color, you lose your flavor, you lose, you lose. That's it, and so we'll dip up these edges like so. And I mean, come on, that is a nicely seasoned steak. Right, that is gonna be incredible. All right, I'm bringing a pan up here to medium high heat. For me, with this all clad pan, medium high is best, because this pan just conducts heat so well, but you might need to do high heat, depending on your stove. A Little bit of neutral oil, and we let that pan heat up first over that heat for about three, four minutes before we add the oil, right? That's the process you wanna follow. We'll let that oil start to shimmer and smoke a little bit. And once that's happening, we can lower in our steak. Slight little bit of pressure here, just so it makes a really good contact with the pan. And right now, we don't need to move that at all. Just let it sear. All right, we're gonna sear that for two minutes only and then flip. Beautiful. Mustn't forget the edges, right? That's a lot of surface area right there. It's all nicely seasoned, so why wouldn't we brown it off, right? Just takes another minute or two. Okay, roll those edges, lovely. And after those edges are done, I'm actually just slightly disappointed pointed with the sear right here, so I'm gonna drop it back on that edge, just sear it a little more. Because once we get to the next stage of this process, our searing part will be done. So make sure you're happy with your sear before we move on to the next step. Which right now is just to let the steak rest and just turn your pan off over here as well. And you can see right now that oil is kind of shot, right? So I'm gonna get that out and just start with a little fresh oil because that doesn't look like it tastes great, right? Although those brown bits, now that's a different story. That we definitely wanna leave in. Okay, now same pan, medium heat here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of fresh oil. At this point, our steak has been resting for 10 minutes. We'll get a little bit of heat back into this pan. Now, here we have a little bit of shallot, crushed garlic. I just hit that with the side of the knife, left it in the peel. The peel kind of protects it from burning too much. And we'll just drop these in. So now we're getting all these aromatics into the oil, right? Fat carries flavor, oil is a fat. It carries the flavors of the garlic and the shallot into the steak. All right, so we have some nice color on these shallots, just a golden brown. Just flip all these things over, drop in a couple tablespoons of butter. At this point, we're gonna turn the heat down, touch over low. So what we're doing when we're basting is 
waiting for that butter to foam, right? It needs to hit a certain temperature for it to, to start to foam. So that's what we're waiting for. You don't want to put the steak in too early. You're putting it into like kind of a wet situation. You might lose a little bit of that sear. So wait till this butter is foaming. I'll show you exactly what I mean. You can see that foaming up now, right? All this stuff. So now we can go ahead and drop our steak in. Now we're going to start basting. Simple as that. And all that flavor of the shallots, the garlic is injected into the steak. If you want to put fresh herbs, wait for the steak to hit about 100 degrees internal and then add them. If you put them too early, they'll definitely burn. I don't have any fresh herbs today, so I am just doing the shallots and the garlic, which is absolutely fine. And so I cook all steaks differently, right? Every steak is unique, but with filet like this, I like to keep turning it. So every 30 seconds of basting, we'll flip to the other side like this, and then we'll just continue basting. You see a lot of people saying pull at 125, 128, whatever. I used to say it too, but I realized after a while, because of all this extra heat coming from the basting process, meaning the steak is getting hot from the bottom, right? From the pan. It's also getting hot from the top because we're pouring hot, hot foaming butter all over it, right? This is a lot of extra heat coming into that steak, aggressive heat, meaning that the steak is gonna carry over cook more. So if you were to pull this at 125, 128, it would be medium. If you want it medium rare, you wanna pull it like literally 115, which I know like is kind of crazy, but trust me, that works. It's gonna carry over cook a lot more. And for me, filet is at its most tender point between rare and medium rare. So keep flipping every 30 seconds, we just do that. And so I'll keep doing this until that thing hits 115 internal, and then we'll pull it off, leave it on a rack, and give it a good six or seven minute rest. Now with our crab here, I'm just gonna take another little pan, and we're gonna keep this really simple, right? Just a little bit of butter. And actually, rather than wasting these, I'm using the little bit of cream that came out of the butter from the hollandaise process, the stuff we skimmed off the top. That's really flavorful, actually. I, I like using that. Take some of our wonderful crab that we know has no shell. We'll just drop it in. Saving some for my wife here, of course. She'll kill me if I don't. She'll literally kill me, and I'm serious. And we're just gonna gently warm this up. I don't want it to be too broken up. I like seeing these pieces like that in there, right? And so low heat on the crab. I'm just gently warming it up. And I'm also putting some tarragon in here. You could put some other kind of herb if you want. Tarragon is a little bit unique. You either kind of love it or hate it. And we just want to warm this crab through, nothing more. Last thing here, just a little squeeze of lemon. Just a little and a tiny little pinch of salt. The crab doesn't really need very much at all, but a little is good. All right, let's plate this up. Steak down. We'll also just put some of these shallots around because they are so good. Nobody's going to be mad about that. Now check it out. Huge pile of crab right on top. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. I can't believe what I'm doing here. This is crazy. And of course, our hollandaise, right? Dripping over the top like so. Oh my God. Wow. Well, needless to say, I'm pretty excited about this. I don't even know how to begin. Filet is perfect. Let's get a bite of everything. Got the crab. Oh, my mouth watering so much. The filet, the hollandaise. Mm. Ah! Ah, where can I pay to get that? If there was somewhere around me where I could pay to get this, I would go every weekend and eat this. But there's not. It's like an old dish. Nobody knows about this anymore. It's incredible. Ah. Ow. Ah! This is absolutely unbelievable. If you're still watching, you're a super awesome person. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment if you so wish, and turn on notifications if you want to be a psycho, and I love psychos. Until next time, my sweet friends, you know I love you and I'm out!